Welcome back. We're going to start going over how to work with normal mapping, high-res objects, and that kind of pipeline and workflow. So we're going to get started with some of the basics here, working with sub -Ds, uh, subdivision surface objects inside of Softimage. That's where we need to uh, pretty much start uh, in this case. So uh, let's open up an example scene. I'm going to go ahead and open up the scene called 10 underscore start. And it's a pretty basic scene. What you see here is this high-res object over here, which is a sub-D object. I created this really quick just to illustrate in this example um, how to do some of this uh, really cool normal mapping type stuff. So it's a pretty simple object here, uh, you know, with some detail and stuff sculpted into it inside of Softimage. This wasn't, you know, done in ZBrush or anything. This is right in here inside of Softimage based off a primitive uh, grid object, okay? that just has a whole bunch of editing done to it. If you look at the simple wireframe, this is uh, how it looks in sub -Ds. If I show you the full wireframe, this is how dense the mesh is. This is an extremely dense mesh. You can see up here in the stats, it's made up of almost 1.5 million triangles, okay? So if I were to take this into a game engine right now, it would literally be 1.5 million triangles. That wouldn't be good, because if you have an entire environment made up of objects like this, your game's going to crash. It's just not going to work. So we can't uh, take this into any engine. So what we can do is do something called normal mapping, where we can bake the details from this object onto a very low resolution object. That way we can sort of have our cake and eat it too, so to speak. So let's have a look at this, uh, how we can get this done. So here's this high res object, pretty simple basic uh, sort of object here. What I'm going to do here is just create a simple primitive object. So I'll go to primitive, polygon mesh. I'm going to create a grid. Okay. By default, this grid is automatically going to be about the same size as the object. That's very important. Your low-res object should follow the dimensions and geometry of the high-res object as much as possible. So I'm going to take the subdivisions down to one and one. So this is going to be very, very simple. Uh, normally, I wouldn't make an object this low-res to be normal mapped. But uh, in this case, you're going to get to see how you can take something extremely low-res like this and add detail from something that's extremely high res like the other object. Okay, So first things first, very important, you need to make sure your low res object um, in terms of space, it has to be located uh, within the object that you're going to be normal mapping from. Okay, So if I want to normal map this correctly, you can't have this object be way up here. Normal mapping process is not going to work. So what you need to do is place it right about in the middle right here in this case is going to work out just fine okay now another key thing about normal mapping is you need to have a UV layout as I spoke about in a previous video okay by default in Softimage when you create primitive objects they don't have any type of UV layout UV projection or anything like that so we need to do that manually so with the low res object selected I'm going to go to property texture projection and apply a planar XZ projection and now if I look in the texture editor you can see that it has UVs perfect now, the high-res version does not have to have UVs, okay? So you don't have to waste time creating a UV layout for the high-res version. So I'm going to take the low-res object. I'm going to make sure I select the low-res object, not the high-res. And I'm going to go to Property, and then I'm going to go to Ultimapper. And Ultimapper is kind of the one-stop shop inside of Softimage for uh, doing normal maps and stuff like that. So I'm going to lock down this PPG, very important, so it doesn't go anywhere on me. And by default, it's going to place the normal map that I bake out. It's going to place it in the pictures directory in my project uh, folder, my project directory. Okay, And you can set up a prefix here. In this case, it's going to be called grid. You can call it whatever you want. You can also set the uh, type of file you want. So you can go with like a TIFF, a JPEG, a Targa, a PNG, something like that. I'm going to leave it at the default. You can also select different types of maps. In this case, I'm going to go with a normal and tangent space map. And down here, these options are actually very important. Some of the most important options you're going to be playing around with here. Okay, Resolution, you can uh, select the resolution of the normal map. It's going to be square, so if I select something like 512, it's going to be 512 by 512. You can also go as high as 4 or even 8K. Um, that would be pretty insane if you want to do that. You know, For whatever reason, for your project, go ahead and do it. Uh, however, the higher this, uh, this resolution is, the longer normal mapping is going to take, okay? And it takes a really long time if you increase the resolution really high. So I'm going to go 512 as it's going to, you know, work out pretty good for this example. And then the quality is really important. Lowest quality is going to give you very poor quality, but it's going to render out really fast. Highest quality is going to give you the highest quality, but render slower. 
So I'm going to go with something like maybe high, uh, which will look pretty good. Okay. Now, the distance to surface is pretty important. This uh, has a huge impact on how the normal mapping process, if it's successful or not. Okay. So you can set up a distance to surface manually, or you can hit the compute button and Softy Module will do it for you automatically, which is fantastic. But before you do that, you have to make sure you select a high resolution source. Okay. So I'm going to hit the pick button and a softy much pick session will uh, occur and all it wants us to do is pick the high resolution source now you can see it pops up over here under the source the object is called sample underscore panel once that's done I can hit the compute button it's going to go ahead and compute this for me automatically should just take a few seconds to do this um, it takes longer if your object has a lot more polygons and it's a lot more complex okay so it set the uh, distance to surface automatically to 0.132 and the depth range to 0.209 automatically, which is great. Okay. Once that's done, uh, we're ready to go. All I have to do is hit the generate button. Okay. Now you might get this little window that pops up. If you already have a normal map that you generated, um, it's going to ask you if you want to override it. I'm going to hit yes. Normally it doesn't say that unless you've already created a normal map earlier, and I did when I was preparing uh, this lesson file. So I'll just hit yes. Uh, it's going to generate the render map. Depending on what kind of quality settings you chose, and especially the resolution size um, and the complexity of the objects you're trying to normal map here, it may take a really long time or a short amount of time or anywhere in between. So just keep that in mind. So once it's done, we don't see the normal map. So now let's see if we can preview the normal map so we can see what we did. Okay? That's where this preview shader tree tab over here, uh, that's, that's where it comes in handy. Okay? We can hide the high res source, which is exactly what I want to do. I don't want to see the high res. I want to see the low res. Low res looks pink at the moment. Uh, that's no good. So we need to set up a preview. Now, there's three different preview options you can choose. You can go with OpenGL and DirectX. Those are both real-time previews. It'll show up in the viewport. So if I choose OpenGL, for example, and I hit Create Preview, what's going to happen is Softimage is going to set up a preview right inside of our viewport that we can uh, look at in real time which is fantastic and if I look at the render tree over here you can see it's Optimod set up a preview material with all the nodes that it's supposed to uh, to set up the real time shader which is pretty cool okay if you wanted to you could also set up a DirectX uh, preview okay or mental ray I'm gonna go ahead and create preview on mental ray you won't be able to see it in the viewport but you will be able to see it when you render this out so I'll just do a render region here and we can see what this looks like now you can see that there's a lot of detail on this object. Now this grid object here, as you can see, only has two triangles. It's one of the most low res objects you can possibly create for a game. And when we render it out, it has all this detail on it from the high res object. So it looks very high res. It looks um, subdivided, it looks much more detailed than it actually is. And all it is is an optical illusion that's created by the normal mapping process okay alright so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out the high res source or actually let me render this out again and I'm gonna save this one out save that preview out I'm gonna bring out the high res and hide the low res and I'm gonna render this out again so that we can do a little compare and contrast so here it is here's the low res object with the normal map and here's the high res object with 1.5 million triangles so you can see that they do look different. Obviously, it's two different pieces of geometry. But the low-res object retains a lot of detail from the high-res object, which is pretty cool because it means that now you can take this low-res object with all this detail in the normal map, put that in your game, put it in your environment, and you know if you sit down and you do some really good artwork and you normal map it really nice and take your time, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So as you can imagine, you can do like an interior hallway on site inside of a spaceship, a sci-fi, maybe a sci-fi horror game or something like that. Uh, do little panels and things like that and uh, you can do it for weapons, characters, anything you want. Really, it's up to you. The sky's the limit. So that's a pretty simple process of normal mapping the Softy Mod. It's very easy to do. Softy Mod makes it very simple, straightforward, fast. So let me uh, get rid of that render region right there and let me hide the high res source. And that's all there is to it. Okay. So I'm going to end this video here. In the next one, I'm going to pick up exactly where I left off on this one. Uh, now we need to start talking about kind of the ZBrush-centric workflow and what you need to do in Softimage to get everything ready to go.